wealth, security, and opportunity are a byproduct of success. However, it often comes at the expense of deep personal satisfaction and happiness. This is the Design Your Destiny podcast, and I am your host, Penny Chason, board-certified hypnotist and number one international best-selling author. I work with the highly successful influencers, business leaders, corporate leaders who desire a life by design. In this podcast, I will bring to you succinct solo episodes and interviews that dissect the challenges of success and highlights the ways to leverage your most underutilized asset, your subconscious mind. If you desire peace and happiness in your life, better health and stronger relationships so you can enjoy the success that you have created, keep listening because this podcast is for you. Okay, it looks like we are live streamed. So I am excited today, everybody. I have a special podcast interview, but we are just going at this live because that's the way we want to roll today. So for those of you who know me, you know that I'm a hypnotist. I have a podcast, Design Your Destiny, and it's all about creating a life that is aligned with you, designing your life the way that you want it to be. And my special guest today is we're really going to dive into what this looks like from a perspective other than mindset, from a perspective other than business, other than spirituality. However, I find that by the time we get to the end of this, you're going to see that all of these things come together they're not in isolation. So without further ado, let me introduce my guest, Dr. Alexandria Rosa. Uh, she is a registered nurse. She is a doctorate in nursing practice. She left or began the transition away from the bedside and runs a telemedicine, functional medicine practice. I'm going to let her get into all of this because it's a great story on its own. But like me, she loves to serve highly functioning professionals, CEOs, high-level entrepreneurs, because in order for us to expand our impact, in order for us to enjoy the fruits of everything that we do, mm -hmm. a lot of things have to come together to support us. So without further ado, welcome, Alex. And please, I did a very short intro. <laughs> Share a little bit more about your background and we'll get a little bit more into how you got to where you are today. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it so much. I'm so glad we connected and I definitely vibe with so much of what you talk about because it is very much the holistic, you know, looking at people holistically and there's so much more to physical health than just physical, physical things. <laughs> and there's yes. so much more. And so that's what I really wanted to bring into my practice. And when I, you know, stepped away from the bedside and like we were kind of talking a little bit before, you know, I've been in healthcare myself for over half my life. So it's been almost 25 years now that I have been in healthcare and the last like 15 or so I spent doing critical care, ICU, cardiac, um, open heart recovery. That was my jam, my specialty area for like the last almost 15 years where I practice at the bedside. And once I, I guess the last, I think about my journey into like entrepreneurship or being on my own really was probably about the last three years where I wanted to kind of take my teaching and, and all of the years of experience that I had and kind of do, do something on my own because a, probably another podcast for another day, but I was definitely getting burnt out of working at the bedside of being so physically and emotionally involved. And so I had transitioned into teaching and then I had noticed that so many people were asking me about my personal life and how I did my work-life balance and my time management. Because at that time I had three kids, I was working full-time, I was going to full school full-time, you know, doing residency and clinicals. And and I had actually got into like the best shape of my life. And I was always very happy and had a positive attitude. And people were like, well, how, how do you do this? <laughs> like, how, how do you function like this? And so I realized that there was something there that I could help other 
people with, other moms with especially. So when I first started kind of coming out into my own in entrepreneurship, I did a lot of coaching around time management, work-life balance, self-discipline, productivity, like that was my jam area. But what I found was everybody I worked with kept coming back to health issues and health questions for themselves, their family, whoever. So I knew that when I was finished with my doctorate that I really wanted to just transition into telemedicine and just take it there because that's really where the need was. But then I also knew that with all of my background, with the whole time management and the work life and like I had lived all of that, I had lived that and got through to the other side that I knew I could transfer all of that and wrap it into, into my practice and what I did because that's so much of what we needed and what I saw medicine was missing, traditional healthcare was missing was that whole holistic piece to it. So that's what I brought to it. But so far right now, who Dr. Alex is, is I um, have a private uh, uh, telemedicine practice. So I do um, holistic wellness packages, luxury wellness packages. Um, I do intermittent fasting. I do a lot of work around metabolic health. So intermittent fasting and metabolic health is like my my big thing that I do and working with women, um, with hormonal issues, menopause, that type stuff. Um, but also the intermittent fasting ties really nicely into that. So that's kind of where I'm at right now in my career and what I do, what my practice revolves around right now. So I just work privately with clients. I do all private pay. I do everything on my own. I make plenty of videos about insurance and about the pitfalls of insurance and why <laughs> it's not really there to really help keep you well. It's really just to maintain your illness. But again, that'd be another great episode for another day. But yeah. that's kind of what I'm up to now in my life and my career. And I absolutely am loving it. Yeah, it, it definitely would be a conversation for another mm -hmm. day and actually a very important one. But you did touch on burnout. And mm -hmm. I want to loop back around to that and, and loosely tie into what we just mentioned about insurance and how things changed. Because for me, it wasn't so much a burnout as in around like 2011, 2012, I began to realize I had a misalignment of values. Mm -hmm. And that's when I first dipped my toe into hypnosis. I never planned to have a hypnosis yeah. practice. I took a training for credits for my anesthesia and I walked away changed from that. But once I moved halfway across the country, I was in a position in anesthesia where I couldn't reopen a hypnosis practice. I was on call and we had a number system to get out each day. There, there one day I could work, one week I could work 80 hours, the next week it might be 20. There was zero yeah. predictability. But I began to once again have this huge misalignment in values. And the healthcare system just changed so much mm -hmm. so quickly. And this is my own self diagnosis. I recognized it once I left the once I left the profession. I was like, oh, I was developing some PTSD mm -hmm. because I would get to where I wouldn't sleep the whole shift. But mm -hmm. the night before a shift, I could not sleep. I was always on edge when I worked. And then when my mother had to have a procedure, like the visceral physical response at the thought of her having an, an elective surgery where mm -hmm. I couldn't have some control it really set me back. And I was like, oh, there, there's some things to take care of here. Yeah. But I was very much on the speed train mm -hmm. to burnout. And entrepreneurs can get into burnout. It's yes. not isolated to healthcare or anything like that. So what was that? How did you recognize you were going into burnout? And what mm -hmm. were some of the things that you did to shift that? Yeah, so I really knew it was like, and I'll never forget, it was April and it was the end of my, I was doing travel nursing actually. And that's kind of like how I actually, I think was able to extend my career so much too, was that I went from working full-time for one place to travel nursing where I had more flexibility with my schedule and, you know, a change of scenery and locations and people. So that really helped. But like when I did get to that last travel assignment, you know, it just hit April. We have, we're going through the whole pandemic thing. And I just was like, I'm done. I was like, this is going to be my last assignment. I was like, I don't want to come back. I don't want to do this anymore. And I really was developing that dread, that dreadful feeling of going to work, thinking about work, being at work. It just became such an unpleasantly physically sick feeling. And it's so hard for other people to understand. And I feel like 
but when you've gone through it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you've gone through it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It just was this awful, horrendous feeling. And I said, I'm just done. And I had, I had done so much to like, uh, really disconnect myself from like after work, like after a long shift, I would just go home. I would just get in my car. And before I even turned the car on to go home, cause I would always have like an hour commute that my last location was an hour from my house. So I would have this hour long commute, but even before I turned on the car to go home back out of the parking lot, whatever, I would just sit in silence for like a good 15, 20 minutes and just let all the beeping, let all the noises, let all the things just just separate myself before I even turned down that car and started heading home. And that was like one of the biggest things that I tried to pass along to my students too, was like, you have to disconnect yourself from the nurse part of yourself to then when your home person, whatever your role is at home, you really have to just disconnect. And that's the same thing that I tell my entrepreneurs now too, or my, you know, my executives and I'm working with them, like, you know, you really have to sh have a closing up shop routine and figure out how you're going to finish up your day and shut that down and then focus on the next role, who you are and what it is that you're doing. Cause it's the only way that it's not going to start to blur together and just become overwhelming to you. So that was one of the things that I really did, but it, it just, it was, it was, and it wasn't that I did not like being a nurse anymore. It had nothing, you know, you know, it had nothing to do with that. It just, the being in this environment and being and doing this day after day, I just, I could not physically bring myself to do it. And actually that was when I just put my foot down and said, this is it. You're not going back there. You're done. This is it. And I haven't looked back. So that's, yeah, that's kind of how that happened. Yeah. I, I love how you frame that talking about the, the resistance and the dread because mm -hmm. entrepreneurs can face that. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's a sign that uh, we have to step back a little bit. Yeah. We need to take some time off. And probably one of the most valuable lessons I've learned over the last couple of years, I've been in business since 2018, part-time and full-time, mm -hmm. is that I am not my business. Mm -hmm. My business is not me. It is something that I put to work for me so that I can live my life. It works for me so I can serve people mm -hmm. and so that I can live my life. Now, in my experience where I see a lot of people bring in stress is that through mentors, they take on a lot of structures that maybe necessarily don't align with them, whether it's their values or the way that they think that their day should look because mm -hmm. business can look like a lot of things. And I tend to define stress as coming from seven places and you, we could really just hash this out a, a ton of different ways, but you and I talked earlier before we got on the call about stress, how a lot of things come together to impact our lives. And with you and I both having had a period of time where our passion was open heart ICU, we have seen the impact of stress on the body across the spectrum of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have that real world experience of knowing where we're going if we don't handle yeah. it, but it's mental stress emotional stress, mm -hmm. physical stress, you know, are we exercising or are we physically stressing our bodies, spiritual mm -hmm. stress, financial, nutritional, and environmental. Mm -hmm. I think of all of those things as having the potential to put our body in a straight of a state of tension and stress and compensation, if you will. So I would love for you to dive in from your perspective of how stress impacts someone's health, mm -hmm. their mental function, their mental clarity, all of the things that are so important mm -hmm. um, to our entrepreneurs and really everybody. But, you know, we're speaking to that group today. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and that's what we were talking about before the call too. both of like both of the audience and the people that we speak to and that we serve, you know, and both of us like, as women, you know, we have these big dreams, big career goals. Like we are very driven. We're very ambitious. And it's like, we have what we want to do, but then we want to see, well, what's the legacy? What's the impact? What's the after? What's the ripple? We want to see that and be able to be around for that. And that's going to take some work in the here and now, <laughs> like we're going to have to front load a little bit so we can see the after part of it. And, you know, stress is, 
stress, there's good stress and there's bad stress. And that could be a whole nother thing that we could talk about too. But it's that bad stress. It's that chronic bad stress, that detrimental stress, that emotional, physical, spiritual stress that you were just speaking of. And like, for me, if, if people listen to me, they'll hear me say my tagline. It's like for a balanced life, just add spice. Well, spice really is a thing. It's everybody thinks it's like a food or something. And it actually stands for something. It's kind of like the framework that I created and how I like triage and create all my programs that when I work with women and it stands for spiritual, physical, insight, career, and emotion. And so those are all the areas that identify that, you know, we really need to have some balance and some health and some, you know, good stress around these areas and really identify where we're having that detrimental, that detrimental stress in those areas, because those are the ones that are going to shorten our lifespan. Those are the ones that are going to trigger different diseases, disease processes within us. Because another saying I have is, you know, genes load the gun, but your lifestyle pulls the trigger. So, you know, we come pre-programmed a lot of times with our family history and there's nothing we can do about that. But in the here and now, there's so much we can do in the everyday in our lifestyle to prevent a lot of those from triggering and from exploding into whole nother problems that we have that are going to end our lives that we're not going to be around to see some of that. And, you know, we talked about like stress, you know, we have seen in our profession what stress physically does to somebody like the structural changes, the how it actually changes. And many people who are not privy to that or not from that world, they don't really see how that really actually happens. They're like, oh, stress, I'll do some deep breathing. I'll do some meditation. I'll go hypnotize myself. I'll go talk to Penny. And it's like, okay, but the years and years and years of that physical stress, it's it's done irreversible damage sometimes to your body. And that's why you're having these issues that you're having now. And it's like, what do we do now for you? What can we do now? What can Penny do for you now? What can Dr. Alex do for you now to help you with this so that it doesn't get to that next level where you're dealing with something even more severe, more of a crisis. But it, it all starts from so much of up here of your mindset and how you think about things and and what place you're coming from and from in here, from your heart and from your spirit, from your soul, whatever it is that you want to call it. But so much of those are just so aligned and so the source for so much of the physical things that we end up going through. So that's why your work is just so valuable, Penny. It's so valuable because that that is just like the root. And me with functional medicine, you, we get to the root cause. And so much of that root cause is so much of this misalignment that we have going on here. Right. And I stress all of the time that it's our thoughts that create our emotions and our emotions are what trigger that physiological response in the body. Now in 2019, I wrote a number one international bestseller called breaking the fibro code. That was before I found that my true passion lied in working with people uh, who recognize that this personal growth was going to help them mm -hmm. expand their impact. Mm -hmm. But within that book, um, one of the things I explored was epigenetics mm -hmm. because so many people uh, who have fibromyalgia, they understand that there are genes involved, but most people don't understand the difference between genetics mm -hmm. and epigenetics. And only between three and 5%, of course, you may know more updated numbers than I do, but only between three and 5% of all disease is purely genetic. Mm -hmm. The rest of it is, is influenced and these things get switched on and off. And one of the most impressive studies I found was written by Dusik. And they found that with eight weeks of training your relaxation response, mm -hmm. you could flip 1,561 genes. And if you were experienced in breath work mm -hmm. and you did this eight weeks of focus training, it was over 2000 genes mm -hmm. that you could influence. You could flip those switches. And I, I agree. I think there's a point where we hit critical mass yeah. and we can't undo all the things that, that have, have been done. Yeah. But what is your experience with that? Because I have worked with clients for confidence and motivation and they, one person was on disability 
for severe bilateral arthritis in the knees. She was in her 40s. And we worked on her confidence and motivation. Mm -hmm. And four weeks into it, her knee pain was gone. She was no longer yeah. using a walking stick. And she connected with me a few months ago. It had been the first time in three, four years since we connected. She probably lost 60 pounds. Yeah. So I, I would love your perspective on that. You're a little more mm -hmm. clinical than I am at this point. You know, and it, we could get clinical, but I, in, in actuality, it's so kind of far from clinical in reality wow. because, you know, there is, there is so much proof out there around us and that we have access to nowadays. And so much of what is so sad and what, and, and part of what really drew me to really wanting to start my own practice was when I kept seeing those families come into the ICU to visit their loved one. And you saw the same type of issues throughout the entire family from the little ones that were like overweight as little kids, then to the parents, to the cousins, to the aunt and uncle, all dealing with the same problems, complaining of the same things, the person in the bed with just an advanced version of what everybody else had going on. So it's people believe that that because of their environment of who they're surrounded with and what they've grown up that that's what they have to be and so their mind automatically goes to well this is this is what it is and this is what I got to deal with this is my life and but if we step beyond that there's so much proof out there that that is not the reality that might be your reality but that's not the re the bigger reality of the situation and that goes for so much especially with people with chronic illnesses, chronic pain, or any type of other chronic illness, people get so stuck in the identity of the disease instead of all the opportunities and all the things that are around them, all the reality of the situation besides just that. So that is such a huge part of it is that the diagnosis does not define you. Your reality is can be so much more expanded. You, it's just not what you're used to. And so that's a huge, huge part of it there. So, you know, that's what I would, I would say, but to speak clinically about what you said, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, that is so true. And so what we see, um, and you know, the mind is, you know, the mind and the spirit is so powerful. And I think we talked before too, a little bit about hospice before. I feel like, I don't, if we talked about that before, I don't think but, so. um, I had done a couple years of hospice work and I mean, you know, and maybe you've even experienced this, or I'm sure other people have experienced this, but like, you know, people that hold on for certain loved ones to show up, you know, like, and as soon as that person shows up and says something, then the person is gone. They take their last breath and they're gone. The human spirit, the energy around us, that shit is so real. That is so real. And people will hold on. I have seen it and you've seen it. How many mm -hmm. times do you think somebody is dead? Like, this is it. They're dead. They're done. And they're not. Or they come back. And it's it's incredible. There are miracles. We have seen miracles, girl. There is so much stuff out there that we cannot even begin to understand. But we just limit ourselves. We shrink ourselves down. We we just go to what we've, ex you know, to our little environments, what we've experienced and for so much, for so many of us, that just holds us back and, and it's hard to step beyond that and go past that. So there, there's so much more in all of that. <laughs> we can talk about. There, there, there is. And you said a word that I just really, with my subconscious work, I hone in on in its identity, mm. right? When we wrap our identity in anything, mm -hmm. that's yeah. what we become. Mm -hmm. That's what we become. And, and, you know, when people step into the entrepreneurial space, when they become CEOs, like we, we understand that knowledge is power if we mm -hmm. use it, if we act upon it. Yeah. And what would you share as being one key ingredient? You talked about spice. What would be the one key ingredient from your perspective yeah. that puts someone on a path to having that spice so mm -hmm. that they can begin to transform their physical health along with their mental, emotional, spiritual. I, I know without a doubt. And now that you asked me that, that would be the question that I wish more people would ask me is that question. It without a doubt is the eye of spice insight. 
It's self-awareness. It's taking responsibility. It's acknowledging that you are at the place in your life because of X, Y, and Z. And ain't no, it's not nobody else's problem but you. And you're the only one that can help yourself to get out of there. Because for me, when, because I was so sick for most of my entire life, I was very overweight. I had depression, anxiety. I had high blood pressure. I went into heart failure. Like I was sick. I was really sick. And I, I, I never took any responsibility for it. I never did enough insight. I never had any self-awareness or any of that kind of stuff. And it wasn't until I did, and I started with that, that that's how I began to heal. And that's how I began to transform my life and to save my life was by doing that. It was really understanding the eye, the eye of spice, the insight, the self-awareness. That was, that was the key hundred percent without a doubt. And I feel like for every person, when they are wanting to um, change anything about their lives, um, whether it, you know, they're an entrepreneur, whether you're CEO, mom, dad, whoever, if it's with your health, your business, whatever it is, because health and business kind of go a lot. Does, I talk a lot about health and business, same thing, you know, it's the eye, it's the insight, it's the self-awareness and getting real with yourself and taking responsibility and then taking action. And nobody else is going to do it for you. So was there a specific moment where you had yes. that awareness? Would yes. you be willing to share? Oh, yes. And I hope I don't cry about it, girl. <laughs> so it was, it was after I had my son. So my youngest one is five. I have three kids. My oldest just turned 18. My middle daughter is 15. And then my little one's five. And so it was right after I had him where, you know, I weighed the most I had ever weighed in my, I think I was like almost 250 some pounds is most I weighed ever in my life. Again, I was on two different blood pressure medications. They wanted to put me on a third. I was going into heart failure. I was on medication for depression, medication for anxiety. Mm -hmm. I was pre-diabetic. I was a mess, soup, a mess. And I had went to the cardiologist and they did an echo. My heart, my gosh, was that like 20, I think my EF was like 20 some percent. It was, it was bad. If, and I was only like 30 some years old. It's like, what? So um, and that's another thing that I kept seeing in the IC that was driving me crazy too. But then here I was living the same exact shit. So again, the insight part very much was not there, but that was the moment when they told me, because the doctor asked me, do you want to have more kids? Are you thinking about having more kids? And I was like, well, oh, you know, I said, I would like to, my husband and I, we always talk about having a large family. I'd love to have more kids. And she goes, well, I wouldn't have any more kids because you're probably going to die. Your heart failure, your heart is not working. Um, and that you'll go into severe, um, heart failure. You'll die. Your baby won't survive. We don't recommend you you attempting to get pregnant again. And that shit hit me like a ton of bricks. That wow. right there was the moment where I was like, what the fuck am I doing with my life where I got three kids and I'm fooling around over here about to die myself if I don't get my shit together? Like, what am I doing to my family? What am I doing to my kids? That was what really started it. That was that was the moment. I'll never forget that. And so thank God that she was real with me <laughs> and told me that. So that was the moment, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's one of those things that's such a tricky situation too. Mm -hmm. So in your situation, her words had the desired effect. Mm -hmm. You had the yeah. insight, you had the awareness and you changed. So many people purely from the way our brain works, our level of suggestibility, they would hear that and they would accept I'm going to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. which is a, it's a dangerous way, in yes. my opinion, from the work that I do, it's a dangerous way to mm -hmm. try to shock people yeah. into change. Because mm -hmm. as healthcare providers, as a hypnotist, as someone who leads people through workshops in my community, you as someone who has a podcast, people see us as having some degree of authority, which automatically makes them more receptive to what we have to say without question, which is, mm -hmm. you know, really an important thing. And I'm grateful that you had that transformation. I had actually read about it on your Facebook mm -hmm. page. So I, I had had some, some insight yeah. um, into that. And awareness, 
um, to use a word that you might cringe at, uh, just because of, I, I, I know the work that you do. When we have awareness, it lays out a buffet of choice. <laughs> we yeah. get to choose. There's a whole smorgasbord yeah. of what yeah. we get to choose. And we yeah. can choose what serves us. Yep. Or we can make no choice to change at all, which right. is a choice. It sure in is. And of, in and of itself. Uh, my mentor, Jim Fortin, um, this who I first heard that from three, four years ago, mm-hmm. no choice is a choice, exactly. which I think is really um, potent and powerful. So when it comes to helping people mm-hmm. shift their metabolism, mm-hmm. I think you said you do a 90 day reset yep. or ignite. Like, what does that look like? Share with people, especially who have a busy schedule, who maybe mm-hmm. haven't learned to put boundaries in place around their mm-hmm. business yet. Mm-hmm. Like, what does this look like? How does it serve them? Yeah. So, you know, I will actually share one of the most powerful things that, um, I go into this and that I share and I freely share this because this one thing can can start to change everything for you and it's especially powerful for people who work from home or who are in the office most of the days um even for people who are you know traveling or you know going to different things th- you can apply this for all of that but the biggest thing is your environment And what are you surrounding yourself with? And I don't just mean like the furniture. (laughs) It's like really thinking about your environment and being very critical of it and examining it. And it's one of the things that I, I, when I'm talking about in a video, I always like to say just literally wherever you're watching this, look around yourself because that's your environment and think about what kind of environment have you created for yourself? Is it supporting your health goals or is it adding to more stress against you achieving your goals? Is it providing friction and resistance and opportunities for you to make excuses and to not follow through with what you want to do? Um, And a lot of that can look like where you have positioned your office, even in your home, where have you, where do you tend to do a lot of your work? Is it so you don't have to get up and move around a lot? Do you have a little snack drawer around you? So you don't got to get up and walk downstairs to go get something to eat. Um, Your car can look like that too. If you do meetings from your car, I know I used to always do meetings from my car because I was on the go with the kids. Do you got little snacks and treats in your car? really examining your environment because most of the time we have created comfy cozy environments that support our illness that support our lifestyle to be how it currently is so if you're at a point in your life where you're not happy with what is happening with your physical health look to your environment what have you created what have you allowed what have you encouraged what have you condoned (laughs) because you're the only one that has created this right just like you said it's a choice you have created this for good, for better, for worse. You have created this. And what types of things are you allowing and choosing to be brought into your home? That's another huge one. The quality of ingredients, the quality of foods, the items, like really getting critical of all of that because when it becomes a lifestyle change, which is what I'm a proponent of, it's not a quick fix or anything like that. The 90 day thing is what gets the awareness, the insight going to start making these changes because it's a lifestyle. It's a lifetime change, a lifetime of bad habits and things that you're trying to undo for various reasons. So you really have to look at everything around you, be very critical of it and the quality and the quantity and just all the things that you come in contact with, they make up your environment. You really got to start looking at them more seriously. And is it, is it serving your future self or is it keeping you stuck here where you are right now? So it's a really great way to just start looking at things in your life in general to really start that process for yourself. Yeah, I think that's really a great point in, in terms of looking around at your environment because when the pandemic first hit, mm-hmm. I moved my office to home and mm-hmm. I literally didn't keep a schedule Like I was doing house stuff and work stuff all at the same time and in between. And I would take a break between clients and I would go wash the breakfast dishes or whatever. I mean, it was just kind of all over the place. And I was so excited to get back into an office Mm -hmm. because I can separate from that Mm -hmm. and, and not have the distractions and those things that create the stress. But the other piece of that is that, um, 
in healthcare, we have what's called a workaround. These things happen in business too. Mm -hmm. It's where the situation is not optimal and you just do the next best thing. Yeah. So I, I know from past experience, meal planning and meal prepping works for me. And mm -hmm. so what I decided in December, and I, I finally got home this weekend, I've been traveling for 10 weeks, was that I, I came home, I cleaned out the refrigerator, completely scrubbed it like fresh mm -hmm. start, mentally fresh yeah. start, and then went shopping and we bought groceries. I stocked everything up and I don't think we bought any processed food mm -hmm. because I have started to look at the labels yep. and there is more stuff in our food than there is food in our food mm -hmm. and, and, and recognizing that those things impact our energy. They impact our sleep. They impact our metabolism. And my goal this year is to really grow this business and to have the energy, the mental focus and the clarity and to mm -hmm. sleep well to do that. This has to be a fine tuned machine. Sure does. So this, I am my priority and the business will grow as a result of it. Yeah. Do you have examples of that in the work that you've done with clients? Because I'm sure you oh. must. <laughs> oh yeah, without it, without a doubt. Yeah. And you're so right. Yeah. You, the, and kind of going back to what you said about the, just, just a side note and something easy that people can take away too, is that, you know, if you're, this doesn't have to go with like counting calories or weighing or measuring or anything. All you have to do is look at your foods. And if it's one ingredient or limited ingredient, whole foods, you're, you're fine. You don't got to worry about anything. Trying to eat as much of those type of foods as possible you're, you're on your way. Like that is such a great route to go <clears throat> again, without counting calories, weighing, measuring, nothing. Keeping to those types of foods is perfect. So good. I'm glad to hear that. <clears throat> and then as far as, you know, getting yourself focused and what, so my specialty is like teaching about intermittent fasting. And it's one thing that I practice in my life too, because, you know, with my work schedule and, you know, I have my practice and I also work at a hydration clinic as well. And then I teach at, um, I teach nursing. I'm a nursing professor at the university too. So I've got all these things going on and, <clears throat> you know, to actually sit down and eat, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner sometimes is like not realistic for me and my schedule all the time. And I also, after years of researching this and learning about it and practicing it in my own life, you know, optimally for me to function and for my metabolism to get going and for me to feel more focused to lower my blood pressure to you know to not be pre-diabetic it really was practicing intermittent fasting and doing it the correct way and I won't get into all of that but you know it just it works so well with busy entrepreneurs and their schedule or busy professionals if you can use intermittent fasting the right way and be really and eating nutrition, you know, nutritious, nutrient dense foods, eating properly, eating the right way. It's not starving yourself. That's a huge thing. You're not starving yourself. It's just eating in specific, you know, amounts of time throughout your day, windows throughout your day. But like right now I have a client who's in Switzerland. She, she flew to Switzerland for, um, for a nonprofit fundraising event. And so our whole thing was like getting her prepped. So like on the plane, you know, what kind of snacks and stuff should she bring with her on the plane? And then when she gets over there, the biggest concern she had was that she, she's been there before. So she knows that when she goes to the restaurants and goes to the meals, it's like, there's not really like a menu to look at. She's like, they just bring you the food and you eat whatever, <laughs> whatever it is that they give you. That's what you have to eat. So we were trying, so we were navigating that together. And that's really where I like being doing my consultancy with people around their health and nutrition is, you know, what to do in moments like that. And so there's a specific way that you can go about eating your food and like, you know, eating a protein or eating your vegetable and saving carb for last and how much you should eat and all of that. So that's the stuff that we talked through. And so, you know, that just keeps her on track to keep her going throughout this whole entire trip to deal with the jet lag. We did some stuff for the jet lag and all of that and to help her come back and just still stay on track with her goals and still stay on track with what she's wanting to achieve with her blood pressure and all the other things. So she's in a good place with that. But that's why I really love intermittent fasting is because you can adjust it for anybody's schedule, any 
actually, I just did a video on that today. I actually go back and edit it, but that's one of the best things about it. You can work days, nights, evenings, like, right, girl, how many overnights, 24 hours stuff have we done with mm -hmm. our profession? And it's just intermittent fasting can fit so nicely with that, where other things are not really where you have, you're having to meal plan, you're having to meal prep and you're having to do all these things. I just like to keep things simple and easy, less friction, less chance for excuses. <laughs> that's my jam. And so that's what I found that works, but that's, that's, what's really been the benefit of a lot of the other small business owners that I work with. It's just the, I can focus and get in my zone during the day. And then by the time it's when it's time to break my fast, then I've pretty much knocked out most of my work for the whole day. And then I can get on and prepare my meals and eat with my family and do X, Y, and Z. So it works really nicely and you can adjust it for whatever your, whatever your schedule looks like, you can adjust it. Nice. Is there anything else that you would like to add to the conversation that maybe I didn't touch on? Um, I think, I don't know if I, we, we did talk about it, but it is, it is the stress and how stress really does. And we're not going to be like the first ones that tell anybody this, <laughs> but stress really does shorten your life. It decreases your immunity. It makes you more susceptible to diseases, to disease processes, to getting sick, to um, having symptoms that you have flare up, like really listening to, I think that would be maybe the other thing is just really listening to your body. Stop yeah. ignoring your body. Stop trying to work through, power through everything. And your body's talking to you for a reason. Things are happening for a reason. And we need to slow down and take time to listen to our bodies because as you were saying, you know, you don't, you're not, you're not going to have a business if you don't got a body. So you're taking care of that first and listening to that first and really caring for this part of you over everything. That's really what is going to excel you in your business, in your career and all of that. And stress is a part of life. Like we're going to deal with stress. And it's like, what strategies do you have to deal with that stress? What yeah. strategies do you have to not let it overtake your entire life and to eventually, you know, get you to a very sick place? That's what's really important. And, you know, you teach, we both teach about all those types of ways. So definitely taking your stress more seriously so that you can stick around to see the fruits of all your hard work. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And I don't know about you. This, this just came to me to bring mm -hmm. up. And when I get a hit, I just follow it. And I've yes. talked about this before. People often don't realize that anger is a part of fight mm. or flight. Mm -hmm. And it, it really activates our stress system. And you, you, you mentioned earlier about like a little bit of resentment or resistance mm -hmm. to doing the job. And, you know, how do you guide your clients to work through their emotions? Because what I've seen a lot, especially with people who tend to be spiritual or doing mm -hmm. mindset work, they will push it down, push it down, push it down, or they spiritually bypass it. Well, I should just be grateful. And they never address it. And it, it runs underneath the surface. And I wish I could think of the name of the authors. But when I researched the book, there's mm -hmm. actually... Uh, documentation out there that unresolved anger that has been pushed down mm -hmm. is more harmful to us than a type A personality, which back in the 80s, um, I'm dating myself, when I was a teenager, all of the hubbub was type A personality and heart attack. Like that was, yes. that was all the, the buzz back in the 80s. So how do you guide clients through that process? What advice do you give them? Yeah. So one of the first things is really identifying what is the cause of your stress and getting to the real root of it and having some uncomfortable, difficult conversations. And by no means, by no means am I saying I'm a therapist. Therapy is completely something different. I feel like everybody should have, I got therapy. We all need therapy. <laughs> it's a, such an important part. But when it comes to like this dissatisfaction, right? Like with your work environment, with the whole burnout thing, you know, it, and again, like we said, it's not that we don't like what we're doing. It's just like something about that, something that's going on in the moment is it's not vibing with us. It's, it's something, it, there's resistance there. So we got to figure out what it is, like what's really going on. And a lot of times that cannot 
it can be something entirely different than what you really think it is. And until you're working with somebody to talk it out, you can't really identify it. So, and it is about sometimes asking uncomfortable questions and, and getting real and, you know, being uncomfortable a little bit. But I think that's when you have somebody that you trust, a practitioner that you're working with, that you trust and have a relationship, a safe, judgment-free, like, you know, I'm here to help you work through this. I think that that's what can be very powerful and groundbreaking for you and provide those breakthroughs is that, and I think that's really what I found is it. And like, for me, a lot of my clients are like other nurse practitioners, other nurses, other people in healthcare. And, you know, we, we know the the stuff that we've seen, that we've gone through. And it's not normal stuff that we see and that we go through for years and years and years and years. So that catches up with us. And then the work environments and the obligations that we have and on and on. So it really is just kind of talking through that and unraveling it and then figuring out some action steps. So, well, what can we do about that situation? How can we improve it? How do we need to move away from that? Or what really is going on? And figuring out an action plan around that because we just can't sit there and just deal just not do anything about it because that's a whole nother thing is just complain 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 that's not going to get you nowhere so what are we going to do about it and that's what I've really found has been um one of the actually one I had actually one of my newest clients is a nurse anesthetist and that's kind of she is very much in, in burnout phase right now. She very much is. So we're working on like how to bring the spice back to her life and how to bring those extra things um, back into her life to kind of balance all that work stress out that she has because she's very much into wanting to be a leader in her role, but she's needing a lot of resistance and that's causing her some problems. So that's a whole nother thing. But um, but I love that because I love women that are like that. So <laughs> it's it's been really enjoyable for me, but you just, you have to have that really safe, trusting, open relationship with whoever you might be working with and be able to have those conversations and then create, create a plan and then have somebody hold you accountable for that. It's pretty, it's girl, it's coaching 101, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think it's so important to have a place that you can go yeah. where there's no judgment, where you truly feel safe to say what you're feeling, yeah, what you're thinking because that's, that's the only way through, mm -hmm. right, it is, is yeah. to be able to share that. In, in society, we're so filtered at this point yeah. just because of, you know, perceptions. I, I, these days, I say what I need to say, and I'm not attached to what other people think, but it's taken a lot of work yeah. to, to yeah. get to that place. So for everyone listening, if you're just catching this as it's live streaming or whether you're, you know, you're listening on the podcast, I really encourage you to listen to this again and again, because there have been a lot of gold nuggets in this conversation, awareness, the power of choice, the different places where stress comes in and all of those things we want to bring as much into alignment as possible because you can have your diet in check. You can have your exercise in check, but if you're burning the candle at both ends in your work or with your family, things are going to be out of line. If your work no longer resonates with what you do, if the way you built the business isn't aligned with the lifestyle you wanted, you're going to have stress. So to really look at, examine those things and recognize that you have the personal power to bring that back in line. And if you're not sure how to do that, if you're dealing with physical issues, metabolic issues, you're having symptoms, I encourage you to reach out to Alex. If you're having you know, issues with thoughts and overthinking and fear and doubt, and you're not sure where it's coming from and you know that your mindset is getting in the way, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to Alex. She deals with the whole package. I often will tell clients experiencing physical symptoms if you have not sought out the help yeah. of a functional medicine practitioner, you need to do it because mm -hmm. all of my years in healthcare, I have seen how things have gotten so niched out and specialized that the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. And a functional medicine practitioner is going back to that holistic approach mm -hmm. of looking at the whole essence of you. So as we wrap it up, Alex, please let everyone know where they can find you on social media, because I think you're on all the channels. 
I am. I am everywhere. I usually hang out on Facebook and LinkedIn pretty much mostly, but I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. So it really just depends on like what kind of content you like. Like if you like longer videos, then Facebook and LinkedIn or, or like YouTube will be the place. If you like shorter little snippets of content and educational stuff, then TikTok or Instagram might be the place for you. But I put all out all kinds of educational content. I'm always live streaming and taking active questions. I love engagement. I love, you know, answering questions. I think live Q, Q and A's are like my favorite. So if you ever have a question about any of that kind of stuff, feel free to send me a message. I'll make a live about it or whatever it might be. Um, and you can always check me out at my website, uh, dralexrosa.com. You can find me there. That way you can learn more about my story and about my 90 day metabolic makeover and a little bit more about the work that I do. See my testimonials, get inspired, get excited, all that good stuff. So dralexrosa.com. Com, or I'm at, at Dr. Alex Rosa at all the other places too. So you can find me all over. Awesome. We will put the links to those in the show notes. If you're catching this on Facebook as it's live streaming, I will come back and I will tag her in that. So everybody, thank you for tuning in. It was a great conversation, Alex. I appreciate you coming thank on you. to talk about what you do. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having thank me. You. Thanks for listening to this episode of Design Your Destiny. I would love to know what resonated most with you. So just take a screenshot of this episode, share it over on your Instagram stories and tag me at penny.chason and let me know what you thought. Also, if you head over to iTunes and you leave a positive review, it helps this podcast to help reach even more people making a difference elevating humanity and mankind.